Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're talking about the rarest of unicorns, a game engine on Steam that left early access. Yes, Game Guru Max has been released. Version 1 is out there. I checked this one out in early access. The truth of the matter is, it was probably put up a little bit too early. It was missing some very fundamental features, like, for example, the ability to export out an executable. Thankfully, a lot of those have been addressed, so we're going to quickly jump in and take a look at Game Guru Max. When you first launch it up, you get the Game Guru Max hub. Now, this one is not for... People trying to create a game using Unreal, Unity, or Godot. This one is not aimed at, um, you know, AAA quality games by any definition of the means. This one is aimed at making game creation as easy and accessible as possible. And it really kind of restricts you in certain regards there as well. If you're not into, like, the FPS perspective, this probably right now isn't the engine for you. But if you're looking for a very easy-to-use 3D game engine, well, this is a good choice. So if we first launch into the hub, there's a number of titles here that you can learn from. I'm just going to go pick uh, Operation Amazon as an example. We'll go into the edit modes. We'll check it out. You could have also created things from scratch. Um, I don't want to do that much work, to be honest. Uh, so what we got here, this is the storyboard. This is sort of how the, the various different screens of your production link together. So you start with an initial splash screen that goes to a title screen or a, the pause screen that goes to other menu screens and so on. You also have the ability to create HUDs, like what you see defined here. you got various different things you could put on your HUD. Um, so those are all defined via the storyboard. You can also have multiple game levels that all link together. So this one, basically, you'll see that it goes from splash screen to title screen, uh, depending on what you pick on the title screen to either loading screen, loading screen, or the about screen. This one instead goes to the actual game, and then you got a win or a game over state right here. So we'll go to the actual game chunk of itself, and you can edit it right here. You also got control over global settings over here. Another key thing to be aware of that is now available here is you go up to edit, there is now this export standalone game. So you can actually export your game out for other people to be able to play them. And obviously that was a very missing feature early on. Uh, you can also export out to use um, VR if you so wish. I do believe it is only PC, and I don't think that that is going to change for the foreseeable future. Uh, so let's go ahead and edit our title. Now, this is actually powered by something called the Wicked Engine. I've covered that a couple of times in the past on this channel. It's a very cool open source C++ rendering engine. Uh, here you can see the environment. Uh, so you got characters in the world. Characters are defined via behaviors. Uh, by the way, I have developer mode turned on, so it's got pretty much all of the features and functionality available. There, if you don't see all of this stuff, just toggle on developer mode to get the options available to you. So you got here, uh, this guy has a behavior attached to him. Uh, I'll, I'll show you how you create objects in the world in just a second. We also have things like the start point here, and, and this actually is just where your character starts. Or we have this one right here, which is a video. So when you walk into that particular zone, it will play the intro MP4 video. So that's kind of how game logic is linked together. Here is your game world uh, and environment. So uh, you've got typical world editing tools available here. So for example, here we are, islands in the stream. I go here to, actually, no, let's, let's turn that off. Uh, what I want to do is go over here to the editing mode. And now basically I can start doing terrain editing like this and you know raise, the, raise it up, lower it down. You can level it off. So if you don't want it to be so... Uh, done. So you got typical train tools like that. We've also got tools in here for painting uh, onto the train so we can actually set the texture that we wish to use like so. We've also got the ability to tr um, put fauna and flora into our world. So this is going to basically paint in that area with the currently selected thing. So I could turn off all this stuff that I didn't want to paint with like so. All right. So that and let's just go with a bunch of cactuses. So cactus, cactus, cactus cactus and one tree. So now it will paint with cactuses in the area you wish to paint. It's all really simple tools here. You've also got erase tools and so on. Uh, we also have effects over here. So if we want to have uh, snow effects going in our world, we can turn snow on. Uh, you can also turn on rain uh, and have a rain effect. It's not super advanced. So it's not rippling the underlying water or anything like that. Uh, but it, it does have easy weather effects. You've also go over here. You've got environmental effects. You've got a lot of things you can do here. So you can customize the sky. So there is our default sky. Uh, we could switch it out straight out to a sky box. If we want it to just be defined, we could go in and load in one of the provided sky boxes here. Or we can go back to, again, a simulated sky. Uh, we can control the lighting color of it. And then you can do things like how bright the sun is. Like so. The uh, exposure cloud density, and so on. So if you want to set up your world environment, you can do so easily. You set your music here. 
uh, for ambient music around the world, combat music, and so on. Uh, over here, you've got a variety of filters. So, you know, kind of like color LUTs you have. So if you want to do color correction on things, you've got a number of them defined there. Uh, and then you've got some post-processing effects you can handle. So uh, screen space reflections, for example, uh, FX AA and reflections can be turned off or on, blue, sinks, so on. You also turn on auto exposure here. So you've got easy handling there. You've also got the ability to define uh, transparent shadows in the world. Um, yeah. And then you got the you can have an editor light and just makes your lighting more consistent. You can also snap to your camera in the world. So your world editing tools are very straightforward. Let me just turn all of those things back off. And let's go over to our island and I'll show you how to populate an entity into our world of many, many cacti. All right, so over here, I wanna add an entity into the world. We could just go and say, all right, this box. Grab the box, drop the box into the world. This is how you populate the world. There are a ton of pre-populated things available in here. Um, you can actually drill, there's a, a number of assets available. You'll see right here. This is one of the big reasons why I think it is such a good fit uh, for beginners is it comes with so many things out of the box for you to start working with. Again, a very FPS oriented theme. Another big complaint that they had earlier on uh, was that you couldn't import your own assets. Now you can in a variety of different formats. I'll also show you how you can bring in a character rig for the character creator. So once you've got this asset in place, what you'll often want to do is apply some kind of a behavior for it once a static object. So I don't want to create a static object. Uh, so let's add a, what kind of object do I want to add? Hmm. Okay, it seems to be in part of how the original object was defined. So the object's defined over here. So example, I can grab this barrel object right there and we'll drop that into the world. That is not a static object, it's a dynamic object. So what you're gonna notice here is now you can define a behavior for it. You click here on the behaviors and this is how you add your game logic, at least the out of the box way of doing so. So if you wanted to do uh, special effects on it, so a fade in song around it, or uh, let's see, how can I, hmm, what else could we wanna do? Horror? Jump scare, HUDs, markers, objects. What would we do with an explosive barrel? Dynamite. All right, that would work. So we give the dynamite effect to it, like so. Add selected behavior, and boom. Now this guy has the dynamite effect attached to it. So that is how you would add your various different game objects. Uh, you can actually extend and create your own versions of these. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, and you know what? I'm pretty much there. There's a couple other things to showcase. So there's a couple of tools. These are sort of standalone uh, editing tools you create. So there is a particle editing tool. So if you want to create your own particle systems like fire and so on, uh, you can do so using this particular tool. There is also a building editor. This was another complaint that they had early on. So there was no way to do internal spaces. Now there is. So what you're going to see here is we've got this uh, ability to create and define walls. So let's go here. We could expand this guy out. Uh, we could add a door to that wall. We can add another door here. Uh, we could add some windows in like so. Now we can add some stairs in like so and so on. So now there is this ability to define these internal spaces. You can also paint whatever textures you wish uh, into the world. So that is done using paint mode over here. Uh, and I think I need to go, okay, so click create mode. So I don't want to put in, I want edit mode. I want to paint, I think. All right, yeah, so what I can do now is I come in here and I could paint out anything and change the textures. It's pretty rudimentary, but it makes it very easy to create these internal 3D spaces that you can now link into your levels. That was another big thing that a lot of people complained about as a missing tool. Uh, and then you can export out accordingly. Um, now, the weird thing is there's no exit here, which is very strange because you don't necessarily realize that you are in a separate application when you do that. So that was a, a little bit of a weird UI quirk on that regard. Another thing that you're going to find is there is also this character creator in here uh, for creating you know, NPCs and so on in your world, even though this guy's seen some stuff. He's definitely seen some stuff. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward, um, you know, like a world's got all the animations that are applied to him. We can give him, uh, you know, accessories, we can change out his face. If you've ever used a character creator inside of uh, you know any kind of a video game, you know what the process is like. There is a ton of, uh, again, gear set up for things. We've got a variety of different pants styles we can hook up for him, and obviously make a male or female. We can apply various different animations to him and have them different ranges. You got some control over how this character is controlled, and then you can save said character out. So that is kind of the, the crux of it. So we can also then go back to the storyboard at any time. 
And then again, they all link together via this storyboard. So that is how your editing works. It's a pretty easy to use game engine. Again, I think it is the easiest 3D game engine that's out there, but you're not going to create the next, you know, Baldur's Gate 3 or Call of Duty or even, you know, most indie level games. So you're probably not going to create something that's saleable. Uh, but if you're looking to just create games, 3D games especially, uh, you could definitely find that with Game Bureau Max. You know, you could sell games that you created this way, but a lot of people probably shouldn't. Uh, so on top of that, there are a um, variety of assets. So you actually drill down into the Game Guru install folder for Steam. Uh, what you'll find here is in the guides category, you got a number of different actual things. Like there is a PDF user manual. This is directly linked inside of the documentation. It's like 250 plus pages. Walks you through everything you need to know to get started with Game Guru Max. And then we got some cool things hidden in here, like the character here. So this is a blender, a blender rig. Uh, you're on the wrong monitor. Here, over here. So if you want to bring in a character from Blender, this is set up to work with the Game Guru Max style animations. So we have a quick guide on how to bring characters in from Blender for your game and so on. So there's a ton of stuff hidden here in the guide section. Also, if you come down in here, you'll notice if you go into files, all of the various different things we looked at are available in here, but there's like the script bank here. So if you want to get into the advanced level stuff, uh, here is your uh, your game loop in Lua. Uh, so we got all the various different things, all the various different behaviors we looked at. So let's say an animal behavior, birds. Here is the logic controlling birds, uh, and it's straight out written in the Lua language like so. So if you want to go and customize behaviors, you can. If you want to learn from them, you can. Now, you are going a little bit off the beaten path here. So if, if you want to start, you know, mucking with the Lua stuff or creating your own behaviors, etc., you're kind of on your own. Uh, but Lua is a pretty easy language to learn with. And this gives you a nice little migration path out of, you know, I don't want to just do this drag and drop stuff. I want to get a little bit more advanced. Well, all of the stuff is exposed and it is in here. Uh, so if you drill down in here, all of the Lua behaviors are there. You want to create new Lua controllers. So here actually, for example, is the, the gameplay controller for the entire character. This is going to be pretty complex. So this controls the game and player logic. Uh, and, you know, this is the default. So all of the stuff your character does, written in Lua, available right here. So if you want to tweak that, and, and if you wanted to make it instead of being, you know, a shooter-style game, you want to make it something a little bit different, you could definitely modify it via, uh, you know, coming in and editing this Lua. But that's going to be a more advanced level thing. So Game Guru Max is now released. You'll notice it is up on um, Steam. It does have a mixed number of reviews. To be honest, most of those reviews were around, again, I said they, they came to early access too early. They didn't have things like exporting, uh, model importing, etc. things that were really fundamental. So if you go through and read some of the negative comments, uh, they're going to be a lot of it around you just can't export. So it's impossible to use any assets other than those in the engine because you can't import them. Well, that has obviously changed. Um, you, you can't export out your game as often uh, complaints here. Uh, and yeah, I get it 100% because quite frankly, you couldn't before. So do be sure when you check the reviews on these, you're going to find like a lot of these are going to be you know early access tagged. Now, I'm not saying that this is the engine for you, but I'm saying if you are a beginner looking to create 3D style games, you'll probably get a lot of success with Game Guru Max. And then eventually you will probably hit a wall and you're going to want to have more control. And when you hit that wall and you want to have more control, the good news is there is Godot, there is Unity, and there is Unreal. But in the, the process of getting to that wall, Game Guru Max is actually a pretty solid choice. Now, what you're going to find here is an interesting anomaly, and I don't understand this one. Maybe you can explain it to me. You will see that it is currently uh, 4844, 15% off Canadian. So like 40 bucks, $35 US. But if I search for it, and I don't understand this, it's 38.52. <laughs> I really don't know what's going on there. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's a Steamism, I think. Uh, also, again, this was available in a Humble Bundle a couple of months back in Early Access. So if you've got that, uh, you can update and this version will be yours as well. And then one thing you're gonna notice here is they have a DLC out the wazoo. So if you want to get a variety of different packs, they're all available here as well. Uh, you, you shouldn't need any of these to get started. Um, and the nice thing is now you can bring in your own stuff. So you don't necessarily need any of these. Uh, but if you want to get more assets, more models, more everything, they are available here. But as you can see, the, whole, the overall product, um, pack gets quite large and quite expensive. Uh, but definitely uh, Game Guru Max itself, it, it's, it's an interesting engine. It's one of the easiest 3D engines. I still hold to that. And it is now available 
Apple version one. So let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Oh, we don't need, no, I will talk to you all later right after I mention Wicked Engine, and then I'm going to talk to you all later. So I did say there was an underlying C++ game engine here uh, that this is what it uses for rendering. It is an engine called Wicked Engine. It is well-named. It is a very cool project. So if you're looking for uh, something a little bit more advanced, C++ level, well, not, sorry, a lot more advanced, uh, this is actually the project that game guru max is built on so the 3d rendering that you saw that powered everything that we just saw while looking at game guru max uh, all of the stuff behind this world editing and rendering and so on this is powered by the wicked engine uh, which is an open source project available up on github i did do a video on it in the past just search for that and you can find it uh, it's under the mit open source license which is a very cool thing as well but yeah with that i am now done let me know what you think i will talk to you all later goodbye